Get off my truck! <laughs> Alright guys, welcome to this episode. I'm going to talk about new versus old. What's the difference is? This is a 1990 Toyota pickup. It's got a 4 cylinder 22 R in it with a manual 5 speed and it's fantastic. But do I think it's better than my 2021? I don't know. Let's hop into it. So this is 1990. 22 RE. It's got manual hubs. This is a bad boy. Everyone likes these. I used to have one when I was younger. I had a 1989. Same exact truck. Mine was blue. This thing is a beast. About 98 horsepower and after the years probably about 50. Barely makes it up a hill, but it's awesome. Looking at a more depth of this engine, the 22 RE is claimed to be bulletproof. You can't blow this thing up. Unless you're me. I blew one up and then I blew a head gasket out of one. So is it bulletproof or am I just a guy with bad luck? I don't know. This one actually has a bad head gasket too. It's pretty common on these, but they're still a great truck. And we actually use this one, my dad does, as a toolbox because that's, he just wanted a toolbox to drive around his yard, I guess. You're not going to talk about my mobile wheelbarrow. Yes, it's a toolbox. I do use it as a toolbox. I also use it as a wheelbarrow. Uh, I haven't had time to change the head gasket, and I'm okay with that for now. Maybe this summer I'll get to it. But the simplicity of this truck is what made it genius. The only thing I would change on this one would be put wing vents in it. And you know what you don't need on this? You don't need heated windshield wipers. You know why? Because the windshield wipers actually get hit by the defrost on the windshield. Weird they let that go, but that's that. The simplicity of the truck, being able to shift it into four wheel drive with the physical stick and know that it's in there and not have to hear beep, beep, beep. Maybe I'm in, maybe I'm not. Never a good time. Never seen these break. They live forever. You've seen whistling diesel kill them. This one isn't diesel, but it's the same basic platform. They're indestructible beat the shit out of them, but do your maintenance. Now the question comes down to, is my $40,000 truck worth the difference than that $1,000 truck? What can this truck do that that one can't? This one does everything that one does. It's got a sunroof, it's got all the electronics, it's got automatic things that beep at you. It's kind of annoying. This one also has a manual transmission V6, so it's almost as similar as you can get. To that because you can't get this with the four cylinder in the manual so this 2021 can do exactly what that 1990 can do i think the 1990 looks better doing it i'm gonna be honest you know this one's gonna ride better it's gonna be faster but it's still slow and that's slow so there's really no difference i could put a rooftop tent on that one just as easy as i can put one on this one and i i'm not gonna be all upset if i scratch that truck you know i got a scratch on this and I, I, I try to pretend like I don't care, but deep down, I, I, I kind of lost an hour of sleep about it. I did love my truck, but I love the old ones better. And, you know, it's really getting hard to find these old trucks that aren't rusted out with frame rot. So when you find one, and if you can get one for cheap, just buy it. Don't even think about it. The only thing to look for on the old trucks is the frame. The frames are terrible. Toyota. I don't know, they don't have to deal with rust, I guess, in Japan. I, I don't know what their deal is. They don't have a snow belt, maybe, whatever. The frames were a struggle on these early Toyotas. And if you look by the gas tank, where it comes down in front of the wheels, that's where you want to check. The inside, just like a plating. You can fix that. The outside, if that rusts through, you're done. But other than that, transmissions, rear ends, bulletproof. This thing's got axles so big on the front, it makes the new Chevy 3500 axle look like child's play. They're indestructible, they really are. And a lot of people will tell you, well, that's because they didn't have enough power to hurt themselves. Is that a bad thing? They still go everywhere you want them to go. And then you look at this. Sure, these trucks are nice in the creature comfort and the leather seats and all that. But do you really have to have it? I don't think so. It is nice to show up somewhere and look good, I guess, but how many people you think are gonna look at this one? And how many people are gonna look at that one? I 
bet you more true four-wheel drive enthusiasts are going to look at that truck way longer than they're going to look at this truck. Too new. All right, welcome back to the office. I did not want to record anymore outside. The wind was picking up really bad, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this back home. I'm going to finish up the episode there. So where we left off, we were talking about the trucks and comparing them a little bit. And honestly, they're extremely similar. I'm going to break it down here going into some in-depth specs about these trucks side-by-side -side comparison and let's do that. Looking at the 1990, it's an inline 4 22RE. We had a 5-speed manual, manual locking hubs, and a manual transfer case. That is a pretty awesome thing and you can't beat that. Nothing really has those manual features today and having all those manual features really gives you the control you want when you're off-roading with your truck. We're looking at an MPG between 17 and 20 miles per gallon. Yeah, that's in a 1990 four cylinder with some fuel injection. That's impressive. That's impressive. We got 116 horsepower from the factory. Now these older ones, they're getting a bit clapped out. They aren't gonna have that much power like they did right off the factory floor. And we got a whopping 140 foot pounds of torque. This thing gets it, kind of. Not really. <laughs> but then we can look at the suspension. We got the same independent front suspension and leaf springs in the rear. Very similar to almost exactly the same, honestly, as what we have right now. Now looking at my 2021, we have a V6. I have a six speed manual. I have an automatic transfer case, automatic hubs, stupid little knob to go in the four wheel drive. Kind of takes the fun out of it. It works sometimes. I know a lot of people have some issues with getting their truck in a four wheel drive on occasion. <clears throat> the MPG in my truck is claimed to be between 18 and 22. I see on average probably 17. I got a little bit bigger tires. I got a parachute of a 10 on the roof. So, you know, sometimes I see 14. Sometimes I drive with a heavy foot, but around the same, honestly. So from a 1990s to a 2021, the miles per gallon basically stayed exactly the same. Truck got heavier, mind you, with all the speakers and added uh, safeties because that 1990, we didn't have no airbags back then. Looking at a hefty 278 horsepower coming out of that V6. And we got 265 foot pounds of torque. So definitely much better in the performance aspect in the newer trucks. But you also got that added weight to account for. So. Is it really that noticeable? It is compared to that 22RE. But I'm gonna tell you what, they didn't make too many changes. And you know, if you're thinking about getting a Tacoma or a Toyota, you just wanna dip your feet in, you think you need that brand new third gen. The old ones are awesome. I mean, I love a first gen Tacoma. They still have those manuals. And then you go into the, before the Tacomas were even a Tacoma, you got these 1990s Toyota pickups. They're awesome. There's also a first, second, and third gen of that Toyota pickup. We can go more in depth with that if you're interested. But right now, we're just gonna compare the old and the new. So I would like to do like, a, like an off-road test maybe, or just like a driving test to really kind of compare these trucks to see if there's actually that big of a difference. But for right now, I just wanted to highlight some specs. If you're liking this video, hit like, hit subscribe, let me know that I'm doing a good job and if you like this content. So that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to show you guys this other truck that's in the family and compare it to my truck. I'm curious if you guys can hop down in the comments and let me know if you would like to see more of this old truck, if you wanna see more old truck content, or maybe if you wanna see us do some work to it, cause it needs a lot. Like I said, if you could hear it in that audio, it was kinda of shitty with the wind. Hopefully it might pick it up good. It needs a head gasket, the head gasket's gone. It needs a little bit of work. So if you're interested, I could do a couple episodes of like fixing that truck up kind of bringing it up to standard and you know we could do episodes of that if anyone was interested in seeing that I could totally film that. If you want to see me and my dad do some more shenanigans comparing his 2022 to my 2021 you can check out this episode right here. We did a little bit of a back and forth checking our trucks out. It's pretty good and I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Later.